Well, and say it and truly mean it, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, I think about so many people that are not able to be in the house of the Lord because of sickness and for other things and just so thankful that we can we can be here and be hopefully be a blessing to uh, each other and as we read the scriptures why if nothing else is uh it's it's god's word and this Amen. should entertain you this should excite you this should bring you uh, closer to the lord we want to study something this morning in the familiar scriptures in john chapter 15 concerning the vine and the, and the husband page number I mean the chapter number 15 John <coughs> all right in, in verse 1 of chapter 15 it says I am the true vine I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman or the vine dresser and so this is what Jesus is trying to explain to these people uh, about how that how that everything uh, goes from one thing to the other, and he's talking about some of the things that needs to be done to the vine, and some of the things that we can use this to be to understand. It needs to be done in the church, and it needs to be done in each one of our lives. The things that he's talking about is pruning the things that he, and he purges. And so we want to see here as he explains who he is and what he's talking about. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. Now, here is the thing of it. And we see it so much. And I, I have... Uh, seen it here lately about uh, the things that the Lord does for us and sometimes we don't realize what it's for. Sometimes we want to come to uh, kind of say, well, why did you do that, Lord? Well, listen, that's the wrong attitude to take because this morning as he's talking about pruning, listen, your life, my life is a vine. Or it's a, a, a plant. You can use it as a plant. And you know, this morning in in our garden, we have plants that we have to pull what they call suckers out from between the, the plant and uh, and the, the in, in the leaf. And listen, if we if we don't do that, the plant does not get the amount of strength that it's, it should. So it grows smaller fruit and that's why Jesus is talking to them about here this morning is that when you are pruned when you are uh, used to the Lord and when sometimes when you don't understand what the Lord is doing for you but yet you wonder why listen he's pruning you he's conditioning you and he's helping you to be stronger because sometimes in our lives we don't understand the things that are going on that is hindering us sometimes and so we need to be more appreciative of the things that happens to us because listen if you're god's child he knows what you need amen and he knows how to help you he knows how to strengthen you and so when when these things happen then you might as well say, well, Lord, help me through them, and I'm, pray I'm thanking you for the things that you're doing for me. Amen. And so it's it's a very it's a very close walk with the Lord when you when you can do these things and understand that it's all for you. And a lot of people says, oh, the devil's the devil's getting into me, and the devil's doing this, and the devil's doing that. Well, listen, he may be. But the thing of it is, he can't do no more than the Lord allows. Amen. And so this morning, when we when we have these problems and these things like this, he says here, he says, and we, we're not bearing fruit, he says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Now this this morning, this morning, uh, if you have enough suckers, as I, I use the, for the growth on the plant, if you have enough of that in your life, 
Listen, you don't bear much fruit. Amen. And this is something that needs to be removed. And he, he loves you and he wants you to serve him and he wants to, uh, for you to help others. And so he removes these things that are interfering with you as you live your life. And so, uh, again, I, I want to encourage you this morning not to get upset, not to get bothered about the things that are, are that are happening to you because uh, you ain't got nobody to blame. Right. Because the Lord knows everything that you need and he knows when you need it and he knows when you need that sucker plucked out. He knows when you need that encouragement from him. And he, he wants you to develop fruit and, and he wants you to show the world your fruit and he wants you to set an example before other people that you are his child. And so these are some of the things that he does for us. Amen. He says here, he says in the in, in the second chapter, second verse, he says, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges. And so this morning, when you have a desire, you have a desire to come to church, you have a desire to be a witness, you have a desire to serve the Lord and to, to bear fruit, Listen, you can look for these things to come because uh, you can't do it on your own. It's, the Lord is in charge of you and, you and you can't do these things on your own. So he says he, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so this morning, God's word, God's word a lot of times is what it takes and it will help every time that you hear God's word. He will remove something from you that, or show you something that needs to be removed. And it will encourage you. It will help you. It will strengthen you. And it enable you to bear fruit that will be a blessing to you and a, and a blessing to those that see it. So he said here, now you are clean through the word. Amen. Which I have spoken unto you. See, he says, here, abide in me. Now, this word abide is without, without change. You, you stay the same, you say the same, and it also says to wait for, or to wait upon, and to do or sustain. And so this thing, when he says abide, it don't mean just you sit around and wait on the Lord and say, I'm waiting for him. But listen, you have to go through life and you have to uh, try to be a blessing right. to others. You have to bear fruit for others, but you still have to abide. And and this this abiding call calls for waiting on the Lord. And it call it, it and it, and it says here that that uh, to wait on the Lord and to endure. Mm -hmm. And this morning, this these this life is not all sugar and cream. Amen. Uh, sometimes we have to endure things that we don't like to do, but you know, the Lord, again, that's another way that the Lord strengthens us when he, when we, when he, when we see that these things are happening, just, uh, just take it and uh, praise the Lord and say, Hey, it's, it's your work. And so here, I, I want to show you this here. He says, abide in me or don't change. And I in you, and he don't change because he know his word says he don't change. And so as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Amen. And this, and it goes on to tell later on, but, but uh, the, when it says here that the, that the vine cannot uh, abide in me, well, if, if the vine is cut off, it can't abide. And so we need this morning to stick close to the Lord. We don't need to, we don't need to have anything this morning that will separate us from the, the love of God Amen. for a while. And, and, and I know sometimes uh, he has to chastise us and because of, of uh, to get our attention. But we don't need to we don't need to stay in that boat. We need to get back and back and, and, and start abiding in him. He says, he says, uh, here in I, uh, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye ex except you abide in me. And so this morning, this abiding is a, is a twofold thing in that he abides in us 
and we abide in Him, and that makes it that makes it. But when that when that sin comes or something, it's like clipping a little bit of it off or something other, and and you're not in His will like you should, and you need to you need to get back into His will. And I'm not I'm not getting up here teaching for and grace or nothing like that. But sometimes we get out of the will of the Lord. Sometimes right. we get backslidden. Sometimes we get cold. And sometimes we do about anything and everything that uh, we can do because uh, we're just humans. Right. And uh, this old flesh, if it's if you leave that to the flesh, the flesh will will guide you in the wrong way. But he says here, I am the vine, ye are the branches. <laughs> he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. For without me, you can do nothing. And so this morning, you can tell, you can tell if a person is abiding in the Lord by the type of fruit that they bring. Uh, and this old haphazard, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to church today. And, and uh, you know, and this, this, I could be doing something else. Listen, that's the wrong attitude to have. Amen. We need to come here this morning with a, with a love in our heart and with an a appetite for God's word. We need to come here this morning with a, a brightness on our face and a, Amen. And, and a gladness in our heart. Amen. And uh, be ready to hear God's word. And and uh, a lot of times I, I know I, I don't t teach as, uh, as well as I could or should. But the thing of it is, we ought to be ready even to hear God's word. Read. Amen. Because that's that's the most important thing this morning. So He said here, uh, He that abideth in me and I in Him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Number and pay uh, chapter verse six. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. Now he's using an example of pruning here. And he's saying, if you don't abide in him, you're 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 not you're not cut off and your salvation's gone. But the thing of it is you lose connection, you lose that love that you have in your heart, and listen until you get things straight with the Lord you'll not be back like you should be. And so he says here, uh, and, and he, notice what happens to us. And it is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now, it's not saying this morning that, that he cut you off and that uh, people throw you in hell and you're burned. He's not using that as an, he's, he's not using that that way. But the thing of it is, this these things that are happening is the condition that you get in when you get away from the Lord and you're not as close to Him as you should. And Amen. It's just like a withered limb that's cut off from a tree. You see them cut off and they lay there and they, they wither and they, they dry up. And listen, as long as, as you're staying close to the Lord, you're bearing fruit. But listen, when, when you get out of His will, hey, you're in a dangerous situation. And, uh, you know, the only thing that will bring bring you back a lot of times is the chastisement of the Lord. Amen. And so we, and we know we don't need that. So here, here he says here that they're burned, and that don't mean that, that the soul is burnt, but that means that's what happens to the old limbs and things that come off of the grapevines and, and off of trees that you prune. So here in verse 7, if you abide in me and, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. This this is this is a, a, a great uh, verse here. But listen, so many times we we take it in the wrong way, and we say, "Oh well, if I go to church and if I pay my tithe and uh, uh, do a little other things, it's not right." Hey, I can have what I want to. Well, listen, you don't do that. You Amen. don't do that because he says here, if you abide in me. If you stay close to me, if you, if you look for me, and my words abide in you. And, and what is he saying about the words that abide in you? Listen, that's something this morning that you can use every day. And you have an opportunity every day to witness to someone to use a little bit of a, of a scripture or, or, or say, I heard this or I heard that and it's in the Bible. But listen, you need to use this uh, and every time you get a chance because it gets you closer to the Lord and Amen. it gets you to remember because if you don't use it, you forget. Right. And so here he says here, he says, it shall be done unto you. Uh, herein is my Father 
glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So the 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 glory that's, that you can that you know we like to glorify the Father, uh, bear fruit. Hmm. Bear fruit. That's the thing this morning that we need to do is bear fruit, and uh, uh, that will glorify Him. And, and and listen, He knows He knows our ever ever trial and ever temptation, and He knows when we're trying to serve Him, and He knows when the things are getting rough and the things are not clear to you about a lot of things. But listen, just stick in there, and Amen. I'm encouraging you this morning, stick in there because listen, it's. It's, there's a better day coming. Mm -hmm. There's a better day coming, and we'll be uh, we'll be uh, going across that river for long, and, and we'll be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But until then, listen. He says, "My heart will go on singing," and that's one, one of the things this morning that we need to do is have a, a song in our heart, a melody in our heart, and and be drawn closer to the Lord because uh, He likes to hear these things. And so He said, "Herein is my Father glorified." that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. Well, you know, this this is this is wonderful. This is wonderful because uh you know being a disciple of the Lord is uh is a, is is an opportunity that a lot of people don't enjoy because they just don't bear no fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, they think that they think that because they have a time and a place where that they they were saved and they went down there and baptized and then every once in a while they go to church, they're a disciple. No, it's not that way. A disciple is one that walks close to the Lord, one that knows God's word and knows and believes in his heart that Jesus Christ is a savior and listen, truly believes in God. And these are, and bears fruit. So these are some of the qualifications for a disciple. Amen. And so here he said in verse nine, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. And he said here, so have I loved you. Remember this, what you what, what he's saying. So have I loved you. Listen, he died on the cross of Calvary for you, and he's making intercession for you before God this morning, and he loves you. And he wants to see you prosper, and he wants to see you uh, bear fruit, and he wants to see you serve the Lord. And so he says here, he says, and uh, uh, and these, uh, let me find, continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, in verse 10, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Amen. And there's nothing this morning I can think of uh, uh, better than having joy, full joy, joy that, uh, that you can uh, get up in the morning and say, Lord, uh, I'm ready to serve you another day and I'm gonna thank you for yesterday and I'm ready to go for another day. And I uh, believe that he is able to keep that which he has uh, bought. And listen, he's able to keep mm -hmm. us and he's able to watch over us. And even though, even though we get these little problems in our life, no. listen, they're to strengthen us. And you know, we, we talk uh, about strengthening and, and there's, it speaks in there about the pa having patience and uh, we need we need those patience, and we don't need to thank the Lord. Hurry up, hurry up, and take me out of this. He's got a, he's got a time schedule for us, and uh, when he gets ready, it'll happen. Amen. And until that time, you be you be patient, and you you say to the Lord, or you pray to the Lord, Lord, I'm waiting, I'm abiding, I'm, I'm here, and when you get ready, I'll move. And so with that thought, listen, you can you can live closer to the Lord and you can understand uh, his word more. And these things, he says, verse, uh, verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another. And he also mm -hmm. said that, he said that time and time again, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So when you, when you, when you see this, he says, it's my commandment that you love one another 
as I have loved you. That puts you in a particular place because how much did he love you? Amen. Well, he come to this world for you and he died willingly for you that you could be saved, that you could that you could be with him in glory and that you could be uh, there throughout the extensive ages. So Amen. he did that for you. And, and he's saying to you, hey, this is what you need to do for your your friends. He said, All right, and that, that's my commandment as I have loved you. And so we cannot go as far as he went. We can't die for nobody because he was the only one that could die for someone. But you can be a good neighbor. You can be a good friend. You can bear fruit before this world. And you can uh, be a, a blessing to people uh, around you. Now, he says here in verse 13, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Amen. And again, you know, there has been uh, many, many men killed, probably women too, in wars and things like this. Uh, and they, they put up their life for this. But Jesus here is... He did something much greater Amen. than what they can do. And that is, he says, greater love hath no man than this that he laid down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Right. And again, Lord, I don't feel like doing that. Lord, I, I, I don't want to do that. Uh, I I just I can't I just can't hardly go to church anymore. I, and these are the, some of the things. Listen, He's commanded us hey, we should be at church Amen. on the Lord's day and the first day of the week, and we're there for the purpose of serving Him and, and rejoicing uh, in Him. And so He said, "That's what He's that's what, one of the things He's talking about this morning." He says, "You're my friend if you do whatsoever I command." Henceforth, in verse fifteen. I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends mm -hmm. for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ain't that wonderful this morning? Amen. Ain't that wonderful? You know, so many people, and I, I talked to a person the other day, and they were complaining about this and about that, and uh, they said something about their legs. And their legs was all, all swelled up and all this. And they said, I don't see why God didn't uh, help that. And I tried to explain to them, uh, what if you kind of had to have them cut off? Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. And that, that kind of, I guess it kind of brought something to them because uh, they didn't say any more, anything else about it. But that's, sometimes that's our problem. We grumble mm -hmm. about things and they could be a whole lot worse. Right. Uh, you know, I could, uh, I, I could think of a lot of things that uh, could be a whole lot worse with me. And uh, uh, and so this morning, I, I praise the Lord for all that he's done for me. He said here, but I have called you friends, and that's wonderful, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Amen. And ordain you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. Amen. So this is the thing about the vine and, and how he prunes it and how he he prepares it and he tends it that you can bring forth fruit. Right. And so this morning, uh, when you when you think upon the situation, think of yourself in, in this way. I, I'm 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 a vine, and I'm I'm out there and I'm trying to. Uh, uh, bear fruit, and 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 and, 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 and in the same way, think of, I'm a I'm a person, and I'm trying to serve the Lord, and I need to get out there and bear fruit. And you know, mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how easier it is for you to get out there and to bear fruit, because this old flesh, this old flesh, don't care anything about that. But you talk, you tell them about a, a, a jamboree going down the road, yeah. I'm ready to go. And so that's the nature of the flesh. But that's the reason why this morning that what uh, what God had these apostles to write down, he wanted us to know or that we could be aware of what was going on. He, he says here that your fruit, in a, he says that you should go and bring and, and bear a bring 
forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father's name, he may give it you. And so these things I command you, that you love one another. Amen. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So right. this morning, we have no right to grumble about the world hating us, about the world mistreating us, about uh, uh, the devil trying to throw everything he can before us because Jesus Christ uh, had an encounter with the devil and he said, get thee behind me. And you know, we, he's, all, he's had all these, pro had these problems uh, with the, uh, the people there and they, they crucified him. Uh, so listen, he says here, the, these things that, that are happening to you are, that have already happened to me. And he says, these things I command you that you love your one another. Now, if, if the world hates you, I'll get back to this. You know that it hated me before it hated you. Right. So that's a consolation this morning. It should be to this this spirit of ours. Listen, they hated God. Right. They hated the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, I'm a child, and they hate me too. And so all I can do is say, uh, I'm going to serve the Lord. And if you were of the world, the world would love his own. Right. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Right. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Amen. They have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. And so with this, we're going to close for the day, but these are some of, some of the things that we have read. Uh, please uh, try to remember some of them, and, and if you can, get a chance to sit down and, and read it again, And because it's, it's some of the sweetest words that I know of in the Bible. Uh, and and, and it, it tells us right where we're at and how that the Lord loves us and what He's got in store for us. And so y'all, y'all, uh, y'all think on these things, and I appreciate you listening to me and uh, pray for us in the name of Jesus. Amen.